and uh, the team that I have I have put in place, we yeah. we are five of us, and uh, I know that uh, we with these five we are going to actually uh, implement. Uh, I've already built PowerPoint that we're, we're going to be sharing. I've already created a, a, a Google Doc uh, space that we are going to share all our documents there, and uh, we 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 are another great challenge that we've been facing is the delivery because I deliver seedlings uh, nationally in, all, uh, in nine of our 10 regions of Cameroon. So I've been able to, 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 to boost, yeah, I've been able to boost uh, our delivery methods by, by taking, I, I used to send seedlings, but now I've decided to, to, to uh, I collect the orders, for example, now as we speak, I'm in Douala, I just came to littoral region to deliver, deliver seedlings here. Mm -hmm. So I do it personally in order to gain trust of the customer because sometimes when I send the people um, will rough handle and then the quality of the product will lose its value before getting to the customer. So that is something that I, I actually used to receive a, a, a dissatisfaction from uh, some clients that the ceilings who gave me, they were not actually the best and so on. So far, the ones I've delivered this time around, they are very, uh, they, in fact, they are, people are very satisfied. So I have also been able to to learn to work in 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 to work as a professional because first you need to identify the the the, 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 the problems of the people and and then you need to also ask yourself what are these what are the solutions going to benefit the people so I've been able to figure out the the, the benefit that people will gain from our, the solutions we are giving because you can still have solutions that people don't care about your solution. Mm -hmm. Even without your solutions, people can still uh, move on. Yeah. So we have tracked down some of these uh, uh, bene benefits, and uh, we are working on them. And, and in fact, customers are actually uh, uh, showing satisfaction. Then customer care. This is what I, in fact, it touched me a lot because I'm somebody. Uh, uh, let me put it this way: I'm somebody with a hot temper. So sometimes the way I close deals, in fact. I just close deals in the way that I, I want mm -hmm. to even track numbers that sometimes if that person should call me again, I will just I will just block the person. So I used to <laughs> exercise anger, but now I'm telling you, even my wife is, is confused how meek I am. I solve I, I handle situations like like a like a big boy now. <laughs> so when when a client calls call me and we are discussing, no matter how harsh the client how difficult the client might be. Yeah. Yes. I will, I will actually, I will actually be calm to handle everything, yeah, and then so, I will be able to communicate uh, efficiently. Thank you. Good. Thank you. That's so. That's so amazing, and and that is very important. Uh, I'm sure in in the course you must have heard me talk about experience. Customer experience is 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 the kind of feeling that somebody goes through when they buy from you. It's, it's called customer buying experience. Like it is the process. If I if I reach out to you, hey, Kennedy, hi, how are you? How you reply the how are you is part of the buying experience. How gentle, how caring, how loving, how passionate, how enthusiastic the reply is, is part of the buying experience. How you handle my problems, respond even to my most stupid questions, even when I get angry and raise my voice and you still remain calm and try to solve my problem, that is part of what makes the customer buying experience. And as I said in that course, if when you're building a business, when you're trying to establish a sustainable business, one of the most important things that you need to achieve is repeat and regular purchase. You need to ensure that if I, Joybert, buy from you once, serve me in a way that I would like to come back tomorrow and buy from you. Repeat Customers who practice repeat and regular purchase will always increase your profit so much at a lower cost when it comes to customer acquisition. So continue growing in your in emotional intelligence, continue growing in the way that you handle customers' problems, continue growing in the way that you create a better buying experience for your customers. And trust me, it is going to contribute um, marvelously um, to the future or the growth of, of your business. Happy to hear that change and of course maintain it 
and it's only going to get better. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, Executive um, Kuwong. Good evening, um, honored executive. Here is Kuwong Allen Gangser. I am. I like to share an idea. Uh, uh, what I understood from the third module, it really helped me mm -hmm. um, to to not just define marketing, sales, and distribution. Theoretically, I'm able to apply it in my own business that I do. Mm -hmm. You know, I have I I do sell um. Humic vet, which is um, a product that boasts animal growth, like um, chicken, um, fowls, birds, birds in general, pigs, and and um, cows, and all that. So I do it online, and I, after studying um, this model three, I was able to know that I was already applying most of this the systems, the marketing system, the sales system, the, distribution, the distribution system, but I, I was not emphasizing on this. I was not, I was not too, too much of, I was not um, placing that emphasis on it, but after this model, I immediately know where I could improve and, and be dynamic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the marketing um, part of it, where I need to create awareness, about the product. I do it mostly online on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I do distributors. Are, so um, when I call the attention, I've been able to build a distribution, uh, a marketing system that runs from me to all of my three distributors in Cameroon. So that whenever I, I have a customer online who is in Cameroon, I'll have to link them to, to, to these guys who, who, who are also in Cameroon, Yaoundé, Douala, mm -hmm. and Bamenda, and they'll run and they'll be able to push the product to the, to the, to the destination. Now for sales, uh, I also understand that you need, to, you, you need to create awareness, but you need to make these people like you, for them yeah. to trust you, and then you will be able to sell. This particular, this statement really pushed me even harder to, to make sure that these people, they, my customers and my distributors really like me. Mm -hmm. And then this will help them to, to buy without bias. Yeah. Yes. Thank I've you. built a good distribution center that, a system that even goes right to Cote d'Ivoire through this, after reading this, this wow. module three. That's incredible. That's incredible. Yeah. That's good, that's good. And I, I like that audacity. And that's one thing I will talk about in your case. You no, know, many people get to have the strategies, many people get to have the concept that they can use and change their businesses, but just that audacity to implement, just that boldness to venture into it gets to hold many people back. Give Thank the you. best, give the best strategy to anybody if they lack the culture of implementation and audacity of venturing into new territories that what you have done is not gonna make any sense. So of course, push into that new market, learn as much as you can, improve the strategies because you're gonna experience new things. And of course, it's only going to make the business become better and, and more profitable. That is beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much. Good. Yes, Executive Akisa. Uh, good evening, doctor, and good evening, Zeti. Uh, yeah, okay, uh, doctor, uh, I want to thank you very much, first of all, for the Model 3, because uh, I've really learned a lot from that model. Uh, I'm going to share the very key points that I've learned that I've improved in my business in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I realized, first of all, that marketing and sale is all about system, consistent action and agility, which is all about looking for very quick and sustainable way in order to improve on your already existing system. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so uh, based on uh, marketing, I've always been marketing quite very well, but sale has always been a very big problem. Yeah. And uh, when I uh, went through this course, I realized something very important when it comes to sale, which is, uh, 
and what you talk about call to action mm -hmm. is are you generate lead from a social media maybe facebook right up to a whatsapp group mm -hmm. then at this point where buy is going to happen has always been a very big problem yeah i always do personal development program sometime and i would generally lead and i get to whatsapp group when you talk and talk and talk sometime nothing really happen and uh, it has always been difficult now what i realized when you talk about call to action is what triggers something in my mind and i have to immediately create something like call to action mm -hmm. i just decided uh, to host a little webinar when they come online when yeah. they when i generate the lead to a whatsapp i create a webinar where i host that very short period of time training and then i give a very irresistible offer in a very short period of time Mm -hmm. And so that is what I, I just I just I just implemented that just last week and wow. uh, the, the the action and what they are doing is already causing a lot of change and sales is already happening and mm -hmm. I'm very very happy with that and so um what also that I've learned is about this ruthless execution that you talk about which is all about not caring about your emotion you are not supposed to listen to your emotion before mm -hmm. you even though all the strategies that you put in place and all that will not first of all work out. So yeah. I learned about rule execution, which is something very, very amazing that I've also implemented. I've been implementing very rule execution and I just, I've just been ruthless in executing any, any strategies that I have now. And I'm so very excited and I'm moving very fast. So I just want to ask a little question, which is something that is holding me back a little bit. Yes, go ahead. Uh, when I have the yes, when I have this lead that I generate right to up to WhatsApp group, sometimes uh, some people are very quiet, they don't act and all that. So I I always doubt sometimes I feel like should I go directly to their inbox? Is this for if I do that, is it uh, kind of being desperate or is it okay for me sometimes to go directly to some of them, inbox them directly and we talk? No, it's, 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 it's marketing, it's conversion, right? There's nothing, see, see, when, when you're making sales then, eh, forget about the emotions, forget about, some people are like, I, I, I don't want to be over sending messages because I don't want to bore people. Did they tell you that you're boring them? Okay. You get the point? Where is yes. your channel to drive a sales conversation? Your job is to make sure that the approach is professional, is cordial, is welcoming. You get okay, a point? That, that is your yes, job. Sir. So inbox whoever's number is available. Inbox the person and do your sales. Okay, sir. Just make sure that you have well-crafted your approach in a way that it can melt the heart of the person. All right, that's, all right. That's your role. So however the person, if the person decides to block you, it's okay, go to the next human being. That's what that's how self people think. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, Coach. <laughs> so improve the best. Just the secret is improve your approach. Make it yes. personal, make it nice, make it cordial, make it exciting, make it different. Don't bore people, don't go and say, don't just go and say hi and then you sit, right? But make sure that it's different and it's exciting and you, you can attach some gift into it. That's good. Good. Thank you very well, much. Good work. Good work. Yes, Executive Emilia Mokoko. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Go ahead. Good evening. Um, okay, what I what I learned from the course is basically creating an agile and innovative business. I learned that um, marketing and sales, even though I've been in marketing and sales for almost 18 years, wow. selling products and services, mm -hmm. I have learned about ruthless execution and discipline. Mm -hmm. Well, if I have to, if I have to relate to my business for now, my business is still in the idea validation stage okay. because what I'm aiming to do is very big 
And I thank God for the business validation, business idea validation course, because it helped me to actually structure and send to, to those I want to partner with me who are actually based in Dubai and United States. For my business, I try to create a lead generation. Mm -hmm. Since it's, if actually my, my idea is validated, what I'll do is I will, I will obviously print flyers and make them mostly visual because mm -hmm. what I want to do is people need to see it when they see they're attracted. And I will create content for, for the flyers. I will reach out to, to bloggers. I have a specific blogger in mind, Delhi Singer, who is currently the marketing director for Miss Cameroon UK. Mm -hmm who has a lot of influence, especially in this part of the country. And then I'll also reach out to friends and family who obviously help me get my, my services and my products known. But if I have to relate the course to where I actually work, I work in a hotel and I can say that La Falaise Group has set up a good marketing system, a good distribution, distribution system, I can call it that, because when you do a booking on booking.com or Expedia and you get to the airport, we have a pickup there to receive you, take you to the hotel so you don't stress, you don't, you don't, you don't start thinking about getting a car, the, the, the shuttle is there to pick you up and it is free of charge. But yeah. where I think my value, add, my, my added value can come in is in terms of public relations, because I have noticed that um, we don't get, we don't really work on the image of the hotel. There are yeah. a lot of negative comments that come on the plat on, on, on the Facebook platform and the Twitter platform. Mm -hmm. The marketing, the market, the digital marketing intern, it's, it's really young. It's not experienced enough to mm -hmm. handle that. So I think that is an aspect that we can work on. And the other aspect is we don't get engaged we don't, or we don't get involved in the community. That's one thing that touches me because I am also a philanthropist. I run a, a foundation for orphans and widows. Mm -hmm. And I think that being a group like this, this big with close to, I mean, we have six hotels in Cameroon and abroad. We have to get more into the community to build the image. Yeah. There are a lot of hotels that are coming in now. So we need to position ourselves. It's true, uh, for now, we are among the top that we need to change. Yeah. We, need, there is, we need to change, you know, we, we upsell all the time, all the time we upsell, you know, customers, they don't get the same things they get at La Falaise, there's always something innovative, I can say the marketing team is really good. There's uh, always an all right, thank you, that thank you. They need to build the, 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 image. the image, yeah, very important, it's very important, and that is one thing that will really separate the hotel from the others in a very powerful way. So being strategic in how um, you guys work on your public relations. <clears throat> and one thing with public relations that I like is when it is well done, it has a very long-term impact on the image of the business of the institution. So if the hotel can intentionally invest on that, it's going to go a very long way to uh, uh, support uh, the, the future image of the institution. All right, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Full Genesis, can you share? Hello, good evening, uh, doctor. Good evening, my dear executives. I hope you all are doing well. Good evening. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm so much pleased to be amongst you this evening. Uh, and I'm so excited this evening because uh, this is happening at uh, the right time. I have been uh, running my business for the past four years now. And uh, it's rather unfortunate. I, I, I do not have uh, enough skills as far as uh, marketing is concerned. And uh, I must confess, this has been one of the uh, major issues 
uh, that slowed my business for the past four years. So in this program, uh, I'm happy because I, I learned a series of things. And I would like to share with you because uh, it is very, very interesting. I understood that uh, marketing is a uh, flyer. is more than just maybe advertising on social media, creating a website and, and all of that. Uh, I went as far as uh, understanding that uh, before you you start thinking about marketing, you must think about your brand. Your mm -hmm. brand is uh, one of the most important uh, aspects of business as far as marketing is concerned. When a consumer buys your product or your service, uh, there's this picture they have in mind. Mm -hmm. We lose executive genesis. Network is surely shaking up. What's oh, that? Yes, we lost you for a few seconds. Or is it me? Yes. I, 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 am I on now? Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, okay. I was talking about brand and I was I, I made sure I'm mm -hmm. uh, which is what takes me to to branding I I have been running my business, but I have not really uh, put branding uh, into consideration. Mm -hmm. So after the course I learned about branding, I've been working on, uh, since last week, I've been working on uh, uh, branding my business, like all our social media platforms, mm -hmm. there's a team we came up with. We, if you go to our social media, the kind of images you're going to see, you will see a kind of a uniform. The, you, the same team that we'll be using on on, uh, on, on Instagram, the mm -hmm. same team we're going to use all the other social media platforms and on our website, which is uh, what will make our brand unique. Now, uh, all right, we can end there. We can. Uh, that's good. And, and I'm happy to hear those, uh, the implementation of those changes. And one thing with branding that is very critical is sustaining the actions that you have started. When you sustain those actions, they will go a very long way to contribute to uh, 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 the growth of, uh, of, of your brand. And let me, uh, let, me, let me tell you something that is certain about branding. One thing that is certain about branding is that branding always contribute a ripple sales effect. Branding is one of those things that when you do it well, while you are sleeping, it can be making money for you. It can be pushing a customer to make a buying decision. And when you wake up, somebody is telling you, can you send me a bank account? Because the, the brand has been speaking in their minds or they have been coming across it and they have been seeing different ways that uh, uh, you are the best service provider or the best value creator that they can work with. Excellent, excellent. All right, I think those are the hands so far for these questions. Uh, now, any, any follow-up questions? You can ask now any follow-up questions about this particular topic. Please ask the questions now. Any? Or we proceed. I have a question. I have a question, Doc. Yes. Executive uh, Kuan, go ahead, then Rene. Yes. Um, talking about um, uh, making your customer uh, like you, like your service, yeah. and then like your product. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm looking also about the value of the product or the service. Mm-hmm. Isn't it enough sometimes to overshadow your customer, client liking you? Uh, I didn't get the question. I, I yes, like... I, I'm uh, okay. Uh, the two, the question I'm asking is um, liking you and and the value of your service or your, or your product. Which one is, the is you, even more important? On the you. It, so it depends on the you that you're talking about. You know, a customer, every product in the market is being marketed or promoted by somebody. This somebody can be an institution and an institution has faces of people, right? When you're buying anything, anything, laptop, cars, and all of that, at the back of your mind, you know that it is somebody somewhere making this. So it is the same. What if, because they can only like you because of the value you are creating. That's why in the, in the face of liking, education or raising awareness about the quality of your value is very important. So it is basically the same thing. It all depends on how you project it. And of course, the type of business that you are in. The way that uh, a customer needs to like me as a consultant first before uh, uh, um, the value I get to create is different from the way the customer gets to like maybe Bill Gates, who they don't even, they don't even think about really deeply, but they just like Microsoft product and Microsoft Excel access and all of that. You understand? So it is the same thing, which is around in ensuring that the customers get to know and like the value that is being sold. And for that to happen, there must be a lot of awareness and education about it. Understood. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Good. Thank you so much. Yeah, Executive Remy. Uh, Doc, thank you for permitting me to come up with my, my question. I have a a preoccupation doc, that is uh, is disturbing me a lot as far as uh, scaling and growing my business is concerned. And this this my problem is is on time management doc. You know I I happen to be a head teacher of a school, mm-hmm. and uh, added to that I have my my business which is on my shoulders. I have a family to manage, family of four children. I have uh, church activities. I have uh, parents whose children are under my organization for aptitude and attitude follow up. Mm. And I also have uh, some potential public figures to whom I. I need to tap and build some quality relationships with mm-hmm. for eventual uh, maybe administrative purpose or for business purposes. But I have not been able to, it's not easy. I sometimes I don't I don't work with them to the end. I will cut off a meeting with them, especially these uh, public figures. I like today I was with uh, with a public figure, uh, together we are organizing a national event that has to do with uh, promoting the educational values of uh, Cameroon. I was recently through the tactics and trainings that you've been giving us so far. I use those tactics and the insights of the training you've given us so far with the help of God. I was nominated uh, in this national organization uh, as the Director of Public Relations, and uh, as okay. part right. of my duty, I get the sense. I get the sense. It's okay. Um, uh, um, look, one thing is the truth is when you are growing, and of course, some of the things that you have mentioned, there are normal things that happen in life. Of course, families. We must have family. I need to strategically to create time to do that. The most important thing is how do you divide your active time. Like that's why it's good to know that in, in a week, in a day, how many hours do you dedicate every day for work? And how many hours do you dedicate a family? That is your first thing to do. 
I need to know what time do you do you do you start your day? Do you start at 5 a.m., 4 a.m.? It depends on you. And what time do you come back home and then you shut up, you stop work, and then you focus on family before they go to bed or you go to all of that. You need to have a clear separation uh, regarding that. And then from there, you need to look at the time you have at hand for work. How can you, def uh, 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 you know, share the time across different activities? But it also very important is one sign of maturity is that you start saying no and you start reducing some activities and you focus on core activities. I am still to see anybody who does many things and is very successful. So at some point, there are some things that you used to do that you have to stop doing so that you focus on core things. Like that's one of the things I've been doing like since last year. I refuse a lot of things right now. So I focus on the core main things that are critical for my rising. You understand? So yeah. there are many things that I do that you will have to stop them and take the time and focus on key things. Like at some point, you may have to decide that from hand now, henceforth, anything that doesn't concern you as a head teacher and anything that doesn't concern you as the founder of the organization you have, you are not part of any other thing. For now, your major goals are your school where you're the head teacher and your organization and your family. Any other thing that is not related directly to any of these three things, you are not interested in it. You understand? For church, you need to have a plan of thought. Have a plan on, okay, you know what? You don't go to church every day, definitely. So have a plan mm -hmm. for those days on you, you go to church. Like me, I go to church. Church is very important to me. And we get to go for Bible study within a week and all of that. One of the things I do is that on Wednesdays, for example, I don't take meetings after 3 p.m. After 3 p.m., I don't take meetings. I'm facing out the work because I need to go to church by 6 p.m. So you need to, there are some days that there are some things you cannot put into your schedule and you do that. So you get to take and do a lot of things with the same 24 hours, but you are very, very effective. But one of the best things you have to do is you have to streamline your activities. Avoid being everywhere. There are some things that get to live with by and an activity comes and you see that it's very important and you even have to make like millions on in it, but you still say no. Because you know that you are focusing on core activities that are critical for productivity and producing better results. It, because you don't manage time, really. You cannot tell um, the clock to stop ticking. You manage activities. So if you're unable to manage your activities to fit the 24 hours that you have, you are going to struggle. So look at that. Maybe it's time for you to start streamlining your activities and start, start rejecting some stuff and start focusing on the on those activities that gives you the highest value based on what you define as value for yourself then that will be the beginning of you learning how to manage um, your activities and making maximum use of your 24 hours all right um thank you so much doc thanks so much for the teaching and the eye-opening words and uh, uh, statements. Thanks so much. Yes, Executive Kuwam, you have spoken. I'm just seeing your hand off. Or oh, is Executive Julius, uh, Genesis, I need to speak now. I spoke already, so I need to bring down my hand. <laughs> OK, Executive Genesis, go ahead. Uh, good evening once more, Doctor and Executives. Uh, my question uh, is on uh, my employees. Yes. Uh, I have a very big problem when it comes to uh, their performance. And uh, uh, it is because my business is a little bit uh, complicated. It's growing. I'm changing strategies every day, how to improve the business. Mm -hmm. And maybe most of them, they came in when the business was operating uh, on a different level. And then now the new things that we have developed over time, but yet they're not uh, meeting up. So I spend a lot of time trying to train them, but they don't understand. So 
at times I feel like I should maybe sack them and maybe hire uh, more uh, competent staff. But I'm also feeling at the same time I may be risky because I've invested uh, some some uh, some time on training them. So at this point, I'm very confused because uh, I'm actually losing some money because they are because of their performance. So I don't know what to do, doctor. Now the issue of performance depends on a couple of elements. Number one, you need to look at, um, they are not performing, is it because they are on that skill or they don't have the skills? Or number two, as you said, that you are training them and they are not picking up. Is it that you are not doing the training right or they are not passionate or committed enough to be receptive to the training? So you need to make sure that many of these things are sorted out. And of course, sometimes when, and most importantly, you need to be sure, is it just laziness and less commitment? So you know that you are terminating people for a good reason. So you need to make sure you check all of that. And most importantly, what, what is the staff policy? What is the staff policy? Do you have, um, for example, a staff working policy? Do you have a policy that gets to handle issues on uh, um, poor productivity, uh, um, laziness, performance appraisal, and all of that? Do you, uh, if all of those things are not there, the lesser fare will be there. So you need to be sure. Is it, are they not doing all of that because there's the self-fair, intentional laziness and all of that? Or is it because they are not, they are totally unskilled and they are lost? Or is it because you, the leader, you are not doing it right? So out of this, something may be wrong somewhere. So in the first step is how can that be sorted out before you can decide to take any action step? You understand? So you need to look at that and then make a decision okay. or let, let us, let me know. What do you think out of these points I have raised? What do you think is the challenge? Uh, doctor, I, I, I think uh, some of them uh, that committed, but that, that is just difficult for them to pick up. And then some, I, I, I'm very confused at times whether they're serious because at times they, they want they're serious and then the other time they are not serious. So uh, it's actually a bit critical. And, uh, yeah, and, and, that, and that's why it I, I, I think that, because in an organized, if your organization is, uh, you know, there are many things in team culture. There are many things in employees and all of that. So there are some things that if you don't get right from policies, the foundation, onboarding and all of that, some of these things are going to happen, you see? And when you don't get your employees right, the employees are the heart of every business success. The heart of hearts. In short, they are the kidney, the liver, the lungs and everything of the business. When you get that one wrong, the business is going to struggle. So we, you, in, I know we, we had to work with your team, but you were so busy or you were not committed to the whole stuff and all of that. We had to work, and these are some of the things that we had planned when you talk to your team and then set up some policies and all of that. Because see, how you recruit your team and how the internal operations or policy structure always affect the commitment of the team members when it comes to making sure the business is successful. You understand? So there, I, I just think that there are some key elements in building competent teams and having a, a workplace culture that is collaborative and productive and all of these things that you have not sorted out that is now affecting um, what you're seeing. So what you're seeing is as a result of something wrong internally both in the mindset of the employees, in their attitude, in the internal policies, operations, and all of that. That is just a, a consequence of all of that uh, um, 
which is manifesting now in you having less committed employees or employees who are not learning and all of that. So much, some work needs to be done. You, you, and the work needs to be done internally first. Okay, okay. Sir. thank you very much. Executive Ebon Godi. Is Executive Godi there? Okay, any other question? Let's, if not, then we go ahead and uh, talk about public relations. I want to talk about public relations because this is something that many people, especially small businesses, they get to ignore. And this is very, very important, very important. So based on the public relations course, that's the second question I want us to discuss. Based on the public relations course, what do you think that stood out for you and how will you be practicing that in your business or where you work? Please raise up your hand and we'll talk about it. I'll start calling names. Please, I didn't get the question. We are, we are under, we are talking about public relations, the cost on public relations. What stood out for you and what do you think you will be changing as a result of going through the course on public relations? Yes, Executive Rene. Yeah, the public relation uh, as a course has greatly transformed the way I used to approach public figures. Yes. The way I used to get myself uh, in the public event. As I was saying earlier, I've learned that through public relations, uh, I can be able to get and build public relationships, relationships with people in public offices uh -huh. to whom I can easily make myself known, my services known, my products yeah. known. Uh -huh. Through them, I can have more markets. I can have more chances to get uh, my, my business legalized to get uh, the, the taxation system well managed or easily managed. And uh, I, am, I am very happy and proud to inform you that through the techniques and strategies you thought us on public relations, I was able to, to impress through my personality uh, the president of one big organization in this country to the impression I gave him. In fact, he, he surprised me during a preparatory meeting. He said, oh, uh, Rene, you are going to chair this meeting. And this meeting, I was the only Anglophone. So I was obliged to, you know, to manage my, 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 my poor French. So mm -hmm. uh, I did it in a way that uh, at the end he was so impressed the way I, you know, I chaired the meeting, oh and at the end decided to officially appoint me as uh, the public relations director of this national organization. Uh, the letter, if you do not mind, 
Doctor, I will forward it to you. Uh, I mean, to your WhatsApp in or inbox or inbox it to you. And uh, if, this is a very, very uh, also an easy way to easily gain market. Uh, you know, uh, we we don't grow without passing through people in business. You must pass through key figures in the in the, in the community in in the, in the continent and much more. So, uh, all right, we have been working together and uh, we have gotten to know more other great figures in the nation, in the region, need to run. Okay, thank you, thank you. That's 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 and that's thank good. you so much, Doc, for this uh, eye opening uh, uh, lesson on population, which I never, I never had the skill before, but because of you, the skill is there now and is being developed daily. Thank you. Awesome. That's good. That's good. Happy to hear how you're able to practice um, the public relations uh, knowledge and framework to, to create those relationships. Beautiful. Yes, Executive Ruth. Yeah, concerning the public relations, I actually created a public relations framework, okay. which consisted of creating contacts with major houses, Mm -hmm. Like the, the presentation said, we, as a startup and entrepreneur or a business owner, you have to create connections or contacts with major houses and major personnel, which includes journalists. Then I'll go ahead announcing company news via blogs, influencers, and um, brand ambassadors. Mm -hmm. I'll equally have constant and continuous posting on my social media platforms. Then I'm going to send design flyers and messages to TV and radio stations. I mm -hmm. usually part, uh, partake in, in Takwata games and community volunteerism. Okay, then I'll great. create an attractive website so that someone coming to my website, you want to know more, which will have a phone number that you can contact us and an mm -hmm. easy address, an address which, is, which will lead to you coming, visiting our restaurant. Mm -hmm. I'll equally be sharing updates on our social media platforms. And so a, a community manager will be assigned to reply punctually to social to customers via calls or on our platforms. Then I created a scandal because the last part of the, the presentation said we should create a scandal, then create an action plan to counteract mm -hmm. that. That's, I yeah. don't know if I can share my yeah, scandal. Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, concerning my restaurant, I have it that rumors have it that a cops, the cops of a new, that's just a scandal I created yes. and an action plan to counteract it. That rumor has it that a corpse of a newborn baby was found in one of the fridges in my restaurant. So as a first step, I'll have to do a proper research, meet with the staff of, that, of this, the staff of the restaurant, actually mm -hmm. get the right information on what really happened, mm -hmm. which will lead me to organize an internal meeting with all the staff of the restaurant. We are going to brainstorm and craft this, a particular message which we're going to use because if we don't agree on what really happened, Mm -hmm. You won't be able to watch to tell the, the, the outsiders what, yeah. what happened. So we're going to get the, a message for broad, broadcasting. Then we're going to organize a press conference to for the major houses to know to tell them actually what's on ground. We'll get blogs, newspapers, and influencers to relay specific information. Then now I'll have to we'll evaluate the cost. Then I will see if I can evaluate the, the cost and the feedback with my mm -hmm. team. Beautiful. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. That is good. That's good, 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 good. Good work there. I love that. I love that. Well done. Yes, Executive Kennedy. Okay, good evening. Good evening. In one small doctor, good evening, fellow executives. Yes, when I went through this model, point uh, C marketing and public relations framework. Mm -hmm. It was a powerful one. It blew me off. I must confess, even uh, you, Doc, you know, for some time, uh, uh, we've not actually communicated. Uh, have you noticed that you have replied to me about three consecutive times since, since this uh, module was presented? So I actually, I actually tried to, 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 to put it into practice, and I actually read from you as well. And uh, even though the public believes in and applaud our brand very much mm -hmm. as an innovation to uh, the, the, the agricultural landscape in Cameroon and beyond, we are making more effort to build that is sustainable relations with stakeholders, governments, and individuals. 
who engages with us for any activity. We also, when it comes to corporate communication, mm -hmm. yes, under corporate communication, I have been able to, to implement uh, uh, implement our, our, that is with the platforms, the links that we have, the platforms and organizations, mm -hmm. <clears throat> such as uh, to also communicate as with as made an excellent uh, global view based on our uh, effective services. It's all about effective services and putting. Uh, 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 and, and building a good framework. If you don't have an excellent service, which we are actually putting in place, and we also have a, a, a public relations officer in our team now, who That's is actually uh, putting, yes, he's actually putting things together and he has, he happened to also have knowledge in that domain and he's drilling us all together. So uh, <laughs> that is community relations. We build community relations uh, personally, I engage in, in community uh, 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 activities in my in my village, in my quarter. Yes, yes. I, I just I just got nomination as an ex co member in the in the in the, in the thirty six million water project in, in 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 my quarter in Kumbu. So as a youth, so uh, I I only implemented this, and those all those those parents look at me and say, you you we want you to be an ex co member. And uh, they, they, there are some journalists, you know, I became a, a national hero unknowingly, like we, we studied. I became a national and international hero somehow because I, were, I, 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 I got, I was, I was interviewed by BBC. I got invitation from CRTV. I was very, I was very naive. I've not attended. I had three invitations. But lately, what, when I studied on public relations, I actually called uh, this lady. I, I wrote her on WhatsApp, uh, Patient Mbele. What mm -hmm. did I tell her? I'm going to plant two apple trees in any of your compounds, be it any uh, the compound of your relative, your close ones. So that is a, a rendezvous I gave her in Yaoni. She was very happy. And in fact, we, we, we actually resurrect, we resume our, our deals, our transactions. The same with uh, this other journalist, uh, Mr. Ako John Ako. We, we, we communicate very well. I, I, I communicate, I share flyers with him. And I actually uh, learn how to do uh, uh, these um, graphics so that I can do flyers anytime yeah. and we can post. Yeah. That's so a lot. In order to, yeah, that. yes. That's a lot. Great and, work. Great work. Yeah. Beautiful. I, I, like the, I was trying to listen to the process and all of that and to just make sure that there is a clear pattern in how you are um, implementing uh, um, uh, um, those key things that, that you learned from the public relations model. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Yes, Executive Kuwan, go ahead. Um, thank you for having me again. Uh, I'm not sharing my own experience, but I'm going to share an experience that I observed with the company I worked with um, from 2015 to 2019 as yeah. a process specialist. Um, are they, they have um, a public relationship department, mm -hmm. and, and the way structured structure that every quarter there will every department let's say sales department or accounting department that will choose some primary schools around local schools around then mm -hmm. they will go there and synthesize them that will talk to them sometimes they do cleaning i used to be in the accounting department then so we will go to they will choose a local school around manila we will go there and mm -hmm. then we will, we will um, talk to them some of us that speak french we will try to to, to talk French to them and then we'll clean around and then we'll mm. come and then we, 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 we establish a relationship with the schools, the, the, the local schools around and our company. And the reason is that when the company is a global company, whenever it is um, to establish in a new country, let's say it's coming to Cameroon, what they do is that they will look for a CEO, a, a, a chief executive officer mm -hmm. who is very who has good ties with the community. Yes. Maybe then or to a village, let's say a village chief, a village, a village chief or something. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw that really, really amazing. I just I'm just sharing, <laughs> I'm just sharing with us so, uh, how the companies here out here build relationship with the, mm -hmm. the public. Thank you. Awesome, beautiful. I like that. I like that. Being that intentional um, to, to get somebody who has strong ties 
uh, uh, with, with the public. Beautiful. Yes, Executive Amelia. Okay, um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Concerning public relations, um, I'm taking an example with the business idea I have in mind mm -hmm. because it's where I want to position myself is in, in French, we say d'entrée de jeu, it's in luxury. Mm -hmm. So to work the image of my business for my launch event, I'm not going for any other place less than a four star hotel mm -hmm. to launch for the, the, the launching event. Now, the, my, my target normally are business people who are self made, mm -hmm. uh, professionals who have an income between, no, not less than 750,000 a month. Mm -hmm. So where I am positioning, my, my brand is really up there. So I go for a top, I mean, really top place to launch my event. And for the, assign, the assignments in the, um, the cost, to create a scandal. I try to create a scandal because the business I am in, I want to get in, we can have that kind of scandal because I've witnessed it before. Mm -hmm. And the scandal is, it is alleged that a, a lady was sexually assaulted in a wellness center. Mm -hmm. And so what I would do is to walk to, I try to put up a, a plan Mm -hmm. I try to set up a plan. First of all, I'm going to find out actually what happened because in my mind, what I plan to do is in my wellness center, accept a customer request that female, female workers attend to females and male workers attend to males, mm -hmm. except a customer wants otherwise. But what I'll do is I'm going to research. I'm going to try to find out actually what happens from both parties. I'm going to sit down with my team and we are going to brainstorm and see how we are going to respond to this, the mm -hmm. way we are going to put it and put, pass, pass it across to the media. Now we are going to look, we are going to see how much we will sit down and, and calculate how much the investment is going to be in mm -hmm. terms of communication, and the parties that we need to invite, if we have to do maybe a press release or a press conference, how mm. much is that is going to cost? And then at the end of the day, after the implementation has been done, we will mm. sit down and evaluate the feedback. We'll obviously see if the, that, uh, that scandal had an impact on our sales mm. or it has, Help because at times some negative scandals help to instead take a, a, a brand up. I can say yeah. I can say so. It mm. can help a, a, a brand up. So we'll actually sit and evaluate the impact of the communication that we gave out um, in with respect to the scandal that we had in the wellness center. Mm. Awesome, very, very powerful, very, very powerful. I love that process and uh, uh, all of that that you shared. All right, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Anybody with questions? Anybody with specific questions? Yes, good afternoon, good evening, doctor. Yes, go ahead. Yes, I have a question and concerning public relation, I'll <laughs> had some difficulties applying some points at my workplace. Okay, like? like I am working in the laboratory in a, in a government school around mm -hmm. where, whereby I am the, G, the, the youngest staff. And most often I have problems in going on my, my daily, my day-to-day -day activities because the, G, the senior staffs do not allow me to implement the nice ideas and the innovative ideas I was I wanted to bring forward. Okay. Now, 
is um, it is the issue of uh, um, the culture, the organizational culture. And did you say that you're a leader? You're, you're, you're a leader of the department. I am the lab assistant in the department. That means the technical. Okay. Uh, yeah. The technical. All right. Good. Good. Now, mm -hmm. in an organization, there's a culture. There's a culture of leadership. There's a culture of contribution and all of that. And when you're in an organization where the culture does not promote the implementation of new ideas or do not even promote the listening of new ideas before implementation, things like that get to happen. And when you are not in a leadership mm -hmm. position that you can directly influence the implementation of certain ideas, it can be very troublesome. So like in your case, you are not in a position where you can influence, you can just contribute and raise awareness and keep talking. What I recommend is keep recommending the ideas. They may not be taking it, but keep recommending. And if there are some that you have the ability to try to implement and surprise them with a good result, but which will not cost you anything or cost their business anything, find a way to do it. Because sometimes in a typical African setting where people don't like to listen to new ideas and corrections, sometimes it is the result that speaks to them, that convicts them that, oh, we should be listening to this guy and give him the opportunity to take the business forward based on the contribution that he can bring to the table. Okay. All right. Executive um, Emilia. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. My question is this. If you have a customer who is grossly dissatisfied with your services or maybe with your product. Mm -hmm. And this customer makes a very big statement mm -hmm. and which you know is true. Yeah. How do you manage it now? Is it, do you ask, admit, do you admit your your fault, if I can put it that way, do you admit your fault mm -hmm. before the customer or yeah. do you try to be diplomatic about it? Now, it, it, it depends on where this happens. If it happens and you're in a close discussion with the customer, you accept it. Why? Many customers like, like authenticity and transparency in communication. And how you accept it is very important. If you accept it without a follow-up action to create a better experience for them, the impact may not be there. And it's always better for you to re react to these kind of things from the place of, even if you are diplomatic, yes, it's good, but make sure that it is uh, fueled by um, authenticity, transparency, and, and let them see that you, you, you care about them by, you know, listening to their complaints and even accepting that you guys were wrong and not just ac accepting, but taking steps immediately to make sure you respond to whatever they raise and create a better experience for them. Understood? Yes, Executive Rafa, are you there? I see your hand is up. Oh, Executive Rene, go ahead. Ex Executive Akisa, go ahead. All right, uh, Doc, I have a very big problem with uh, the issue of connecting to I don't know, I don't know what is wrong with you. 
public relations, connecting with public, this is a very big challenge to me. I don't know. I always kind of wait until the opportunity comes before I, I connect with some people and all that. So it's a very big challenge that I don't know. I really need a little counseling on that because I, I, just, I just don't know how to really make some kind of uh, public connection. No, it's, uh, it all depends on what kind of people do you wanna connect with and what kind of scenarios or activities can you create to push for this connection? Who do you wanna connect with and how can you get their attention? That's your, that's your job. And of course, it's okay. just the issue of fear now or the issue of law service team or the issue of procrastination and all of that. Who do you want to connect with? How can you reach out to the person or to the group of people? Then take the action and, and make it work. As simple as that. Okay. If okay. you want to connect to university students, okay, go to the university campus and try to do programs. You're going to connect to them. If, if you want to, if you, if you, <clears throat> if you want to connect with taxi drivers, okay, go to the taxi union, do something and connect with them there. So who do you want to connect with? Where are they? And what can you do to get their attention? And you're good to go. Okay, thank you. All right, good. Yes, executive Kuwam. Thank, thank, thank you, doctor. Can I, can I make a comment on the question that um, uh, executive Emilia uh, asked? Yes, that's fine. Um, I, I, I think because I've, I've also worked in a call center mm -hmm. and there is always somebody who, who, uh, who works on the, on the damage control. Yeah. Uh, when, because these days uh, the, the internet, the social media easily, can easily give a bad image about yeah. uh, your company or your, or your business if you do not have a system in place that also do damage control. Mm -hmm. um, let's say um, a customer is giving a bad impression about, about your product or about your service. You don't just admit and then you, you stay back. You need to admit it. If there's a way, I don't know how that can be done, but there are experts. You should be ready to, to go to the internet when it comes out, when it comes out there in the public, you should be able to control the damage. Thank you. Yes, very, very, very important. But like I was saying, never just accept your fault without a plan to improve the experience. Like for example, if somebody complains, let's say you run a restaurant, for example, like the hotel that you guys run, if I come to your room or I'm in a hotel room and I paid me for, 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 for a deluxe room and all of that, and then I discover maybe a cockroach or a stain on the bed or something like that, and I get angry about it, and you accept that, oh, if you come and see what I was complaining about, and you see the fact, you can be said and say, we were sorry about it, this is our fault and all of that. And you know, as a result of this, we are going to give you one of the suits. You see, you have created a better experience by, by, by increasing the value without asking me for more money, but you just want to erase that bad, uh, that, 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 let me say that, that's a damage control you're doing. You are basically sh shutting me off not to think about it and just focus on thinking uh, about the good experience that you have created for me. So when you accept that you were wrong as an institution or as a business, never accept without a plan B, without something that you can give to the customer to initiate a new better experience based on how they look at your product or your institution. Yes, Executive Rafa, I hope we are okay now. Executive Rene, is your hand up or is it an old, is an old hand? It's up, it's up, Doc. Yes, question? Yeah, thank you, Doc. Uh, my question goes thus. After uh, walking your way into an organization, precisely a national organization,
organization, a public office, a public mm -hmm. organization, a governmental organization. Because sparks, uh, because of your impacts in the organization, your positive mm -hmm. impact, and uh, due to that, the kind of uh, uh, entrust uh, more responsibility on your shoulders, mm -hmm. and uh, they begin to expect more from you. But uh, the tendency is that, or what we are experiencing is that uh, they expect more from you. They give you more responsibility. But they don't give you uh, sufficient resources for you to uh, to meet up with their expectations. It is true that as entrepreneurs, we we make our ways into such organizations through humility, through uh, volunteerism, you know. Mm. But uh, with objective of uh, getting uh, you know partners, getting uh, you know useful, constructive, uh, big relationships, you know. But then when they give you these responsibilities, they don't give you the sufficient resources like the one I'm experiencing. How do you, and they're expecting you to be, you know, up to the tax to deliver the good. Is, 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 is the issue again, no, is, is the issue of leadership, is the issue mm -hmm. of, of the organization structure, is the issue of how the organization reacts to new responsibilities and all of that. You get the point? So mm -hmm. uh, um, it all depends, but, it, but the big role is on the leadership. And the, exactly. big, the big role is on the budget too. It's on a lot of things. But the, exactly. if the leader and the, and the internal operations are not well done, things like this will always happen. So because exactly. it's probably like some organizations, some leaders are just greedy not to spend mm -hmm. money so they can embezzle what is there. So there are many mm -hmm. reasons that, that can lead to that. And of course, on your end, what you can do is you can keep asking for the resources. Or if you see that there are no resources, you, you, you do what you can do with the available resources and the rest can wait. When the resources are available, you proceed uh, um, to get it done. You see, but again, if leadership is sorted right, a lot can change in that kind of situation. Or again, it goes back to leadership. Do they know how to look for the money? It could be genuine that the money is not there, the resources are not there to pay you more or to hire additional employees to get the job done. Okay, how do they look for the money? The leader, a leader in an organization needs to know what to do to get the money they need to fund the, the logistics or the operations of the institution. So it goes back to who is leading the organization or the board of directors, internal operations and the structure that will change this. From your end, you can only do what you can do with the limited resources you have and try to manage as much as you can while hoping that someday they give you all the money you need to get it done. Okay. Okay. Thank All right. you so much. Good. Executive Linda, go ahead. Thank you, Doc. Good evening to all the executives. Okay, Doc, please still in line with the question that was just asked. Is it therefore wrong for you working under such and uh, maybe say oh, you have a leader you're working under another leader and then you put in your own resources to ensure that work is being done to mm -hmm. be able to get expected outcomes or results is it that you will it be that you're challenging the authority or something do you think it's something you can recommend that people it's really that kind of I think we lost a problem when it comes to public the level of getting papers to print or see maybe ink is finished. Nobody thinks that they can sacrifice that much to be able to get work done. So do you think that it should be recommended? Do you think that it's a right thing? Do you think that as a leader or executive, someone who is trying to make a difference, you can actually go the extra mile to be able to get that work done? Yeah. Yeah, there are people in an organization that go the extra mile. You know, you can go the extra mile 
There are many things that can inspire you to go the extra mile. If it's an organization that you know that the leadership is good, the mission is genuine, and they're really doing their best to stand out, and you go the extra mile because you believe in the mission and what you want to create for the community or the customers they're serving, there's nothing wrong with that. But it gets challenged when you're going the extra mile because the leadership is bad, they don't take action, they don't, they, they don't release the resources or money needed to get some things done. They are not very punctual, many things. And you are going the extra mile because you are frustrated, not because you are motivated. Now that is the difference. Now, how long will you keep going the extra mile in an institution that has bad leadership, bad structure, and they are, and they are not intentional with how they serve uh, the, 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 the customers or the employee. You see, that's the challenge. So are you going the extra mile because you're passionate, you're motivated, and that institution has a future? Or are you going the extra mile because you're frustrated and there's lack and leadership is tight at the top? That second option is not recommended because how long will you do that? So it means that you keep losing money for a vision that doesn't really have a future because the leadership is terrible. You see? And people may feel that we are trying to, to show, of course, or trying to expose their laziness and their ineffectiveness, which can lead to a lot of internal fights or why even possible external fights. So it depends what is fueling you to go the extra mile. Is it passion, commitment, and love for the mission? Or is it frustration, bad leadership, and poor internal structure? All right. Yes, Executive Emilia, your hand is up again. No, yeah, no, I just no, wanted no. to. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to add um, something to what Executive Linda was just was in fact to her to her worry. Like you said, it all depends on the management. There are there are. Um, policies in set in some companies that you do not have to spend out of your pocket for work to be done mm -hmm. in a company like that you don't you, you don't spend yeah. i'll take an example where i worked before in diageo mm -hmm. diageo group that's guinness cameroon yes. you that it's the policy is strict so if you do it you're doing it at your own expense and you could be sanctioned now in a in a in a structure where it's a little bit flexible I'll take, for example, La Falaise, where I work. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, at the beginning, they said we should do, excuse me, I'm more French inclined than English. There are some words that I really have a hard time saying in English. When they said we should do, we as, normally as a commercial, you need to do very concurrential. You need to know what the, the competitor is doing. Mm -hmm. Now, before, there was a system where all hotels will share their sales figures with the night. So the night will share the figures in the morning. So we know every every other sale that is happening. So our hotel stopped sharing figures. And now the MD, when we have a strategic meeting, the MD is like, well, you, you people need to get information. I'm like, how do we get information when we have stopped sharing information? And I, I went to her, I went to my head of department and I said, okay, we need a budget. If we need to do very concurrential, we need a budget because we need to go there. There are some people that will need obviously to pay for us to get information we need to go there we get to the restaurant we invite some some of the persons stuff, stuff like that we but we need a budget for that mm -hmm. and he blocked it he was like no ça ne peut pas passer la déjeuner ne peut pas accepter ça i said okay fine me i want my sales to move i don't like being in an environment where i can, i'm not selling at the end of the day when i go to the bank i don't feel like i deserve this because i have not produced so I took it upon myself. I went and for some, for one week, I've been giving them sales figures. And the MD called me. I'm like, tu fais comment? Comment tu fais? C'est quoi ta stratégie? I told her, DG, on ne donne jamais ses sources. J'avais demandé un budget. Le budget ne m'a pas été donné, mais j'ai quand même fait ce que j'ai pu faire. Now I have a budget for that. Mm -hmm. Because the system is flexible. Yeah, yeah. You see, it depends a lot, a lot on, and when you have that kind of a system, you know, because you can also be motivated to try something with, uh, if, if of course the policy permits, 
you can sponsor them with your money so that they can see that this has a future. And in some companies, when you use your money and proof a point, you are reimbursed. You are paid back for that action. Even if you lose the money, you are paid back because you wanted to prove a point, but then the result for the system was not permitting uh, um, you to do that. Very good point there. Awesome. Rafa, your hand is up. Yes, doctor. Good evening. Good evening. Doctor. Thank you, doctor, for the opportunity. Doctor, I have a question. I'm sorry I wasn't able to present the question I was supposed to because of network challenges. It's okay. Oops, we lost you again. Uh, okay. Can you try? Can you try to text? We are not getting you, Doctor. The question is: My business is still small. Mm -hmm. It's still growing for now. I'm just online. What I do is, um, I do importation. I import goods from China and sell in Cameroon. So for now, I'm just online and just mm -hmm. on WhatsApp. Yeah. So um. As explained using the um, in module two, where you talk about the business model canvas, mm -hmm. point, point three was the channels plan on reaching our clients. And my main channel was social media, that's Facebook and WhatsApp. But now I have a little problem with particularly, um, my question is, I have a little problem with running like Facebook advertisements for the moment, because I feel like my structure is not yet well ordered because for now, um, I I have just one person with me that I I like. Okay, let me let, let me have a helping hand so we do this together. Just one person. The business is not well structured, so I just wish to ask: Is it the right move to? Um, is it a right move to go on running Facebook ads, publicity without well structuring the business? Now. The, the importance of structure is to handle growth. You understand? Because if you run, for example, if you run yes. ad and you get twice the number of customers you always get, do you have the ability to deliver goods to these customers on time and manage them well? Is your structure strong enough to do that? If yes, then you can run the ads. The aim of structure is to guarantee sustainability, guarantee growth, and keep out certain unnecessary things from happening, then you are good to go with doing the art. As simple as that. Understood? Executive Rene, your hand is up. Yes, yes my hand doctor, is up. Thank you very much, doctor. Thank you. Yes. Rene, go ahead. Yeah, doctor. Public relation. Mm -hmm. I I just want to to share an uh, an experience, a personal experience on okay. what drives me, what, what keeps me in a system wherein the leader is kind of focusing on his own thing. Uh, what keeps me strong? My personal vision, you know, uh, which always matters, which uh, each time I think of, I say, no, uh, I'll, 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 I'll tolerate these lapses. I will suffer today. I will persevere today. I will be persistent, consistent. I will be humble no matter the, 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 the maltreatment, uh, just to make sure that I acquire some certain skills, some certain uh, relationships that will help me uh, attain my vision because my vision does not put me and put me somewhere and keep me somewhere. Through my vision, I I work to go to higher heights. So I see the bad system or the bad leader who is not kind of uh, putting the interests of the organization at the forefront. I see it as an opportunity to be more consistent, to be more resistant, and mm -hmm. acquire gain what I want to gain in this organization that will permit me to go to higher places or to higher organizations. So this is what keeps me moving, my vision, not giving up. Thank you. Awesome. Very, very, very true. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Very practical. 
All right, everybody, it seems that is it for the questions for the day. Super, super engaging conversations. Thank you to those who uh, um, communicated and shared their thoughts. This is what the mini MBA program is all about consistent practice, intelligent conversation, raising questions. And we talk about these things and push, most importantly, for implementation. Very important. And of course, the structure of your assignment. If you look at how we, are, we keep emphasizing on the assignments, the structure is purely on how will you implement this lessons learned and the practice in what you're building. That is what will take you um, tomorrow to be able to rise um, to the top. All right, I'll be dropping the next course after this on the WhatsApp group and let us keep going. And uh, we're getting there where we're entering uh, uh, the temperature is rising so seriously as we enter with model number five right now, it's going to be so, so powerful. Uh, uh, number four, I think, yes, number four. Uh, it's going to take the, tem the tempo a bit higher again and stretch you further and increase your business knowledge and, of course, uh, um, your ability to produce or build profitable businesses that will shape the Cameroon economy and why not the African economy and the global landscape as a whole. All right, everybody, thank you for being here. Keep building the dream and uh, see you in the WhatsApp group. Cheers.